I think the history of sport has been focused on the body and what the body can do. It's strong, it's agile, it's artistic and graceful. So I just don't think the, that the training has ever been there historically to ever focus on the mental and emotional side of the athlete's experience. I was training to be an Olympic gymnast. Around 16, I realized that I kept getting hurt. You're getting athletes, you're getting young girls, young gymnasts, who are willing to push and push and push through it. And then you will see a certain percentage who can survive. But humans, not even just gymnasts, we're at a point where we understand enough about how we function as a species to also understand that survival is not enough. Growing up, dealing with pressure, having to work very hard when you have that great desire inside of you, that it isn't sacrifice everything to reach it. It's always a balance. Gymnastics was my entire life for the first 22, 23 years of my life. I was training to be an Olympic gymnast. And around 16, I realized that I kept getting hurt. From that point, it was kind of like, okay, what is next? During gymnastics, I had a lot of overuse and like growth related issues. So like weak growth plates, lots of swelling in my joints, the kind of things you'll see in like a 70, 80 year old person at 13. I've had nine concussions. A concussion, six. I need myself in the face on a double Arabian. So I had like a black eye. Everything from here was swollen. When I went to school the next day, like there was just ringing in my ears the whole day. So of course I didn't go to practice, right? But someone else had gotten a black eye, maybe a day or two before. And she came to practice. So when I came back two days later, that's the first thing I heard. Mind you, they're still ringing in my ears. Mind you, I'm still not feeling 100%. But there's nothing visibly wrong with you besides the bruising, you know? What the concussions did for me was make me realize that as long as there's breath in my body, as long as I am able, there's a purpose for my life. When I was a gymnast, one, I wanted to win, two, I wanted validation, and three, it felt good to accomplish those things and have something tangible to say, like, I'm awesome. In club, there was never really a point where I could be real about how I was feeling. I do remember this one time distinctly, like, I had to break my grips in. So I broke them in for the rest of the morning practice. And when we came back in the afternoon, 
I was told that I had to do my entire assignment from the morning, combine it with my assignment for the afternoon. Usually you, you give yourself like a couple practices at least to break in new grips. The major release was like a ray. When you start in a handstand, put your toes on, circle at the bottom, release, let go and catch again. And I remember missing the release, standing up. I can't even remember what I, I but I screamed. And she was like, get out of here. Da -da 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 -da. And I just remember saying something like, this isn't safe. I don't feel safe. And then being made to apologize the next day. I remember even that year, there was a point where one of my coaches was like, you guys are all lazy. I was like, where though, how? How do you expect us to stay motivated? How do you expect our spirits to not be broken when we're not perfect for five seconds? Where does it end? When does it end? So from the beginning, when I was a younger coach, we followed Bella Caroli and kind of that harsher, rigid and tough coaching style. You didn't know that it was harming self-esteem and harming people who become adults later and feeling good about themselves. constantly criticizing and telling them what's wrong and what they need to do more of without involvement from them and choice that does harm their self-esteem and it does take control away from them and that's really hard on them. I try to, to help each athlete with where they're at and what their goals are because every athlete doesn't have the same goals. It's not always great to want your goal to be training four to five hours a day and giving up everything else for it. So we really try to help them and guide them and go, it's okay to take breaks. It's okay not to train every single day. And th that kind of choice has helped them finish their gymnastics career and not f have this negative feeling about themselves. So Selena went all the way to the elite level and did very, very well. She finished her junior and year, I think she ended up 10th or 12th in the country, which was amazing. She knew that the five, six hours a day was just a little too much. So she didn't choose to go on to the senior ranks in elite gymnastics and just go back to the, what we call the junior development level. It has just been the best decision for her to try to just focus on college, you know, getting a scholarship and, and which she has. Enjoy the basics to hips off of a block. So we just could bring over any block, roll the dice, and underswing big baby, big baby, roll the dice. Because gymnastics can be grueling and tiring and boring because you're repeating skills and trying to perfect them. We try to do a game atmosphere so it's a little bit more fun and there's teams and contests and, and games associated with our workouts. 
when it becomes too important and too stressful and everything is hinging on you doing this, it creates this, I call it bricks on your shoulders, where they're so stressed out and it's so hard for them that you know it, it's creating a stress that doesn't need to be there if we just kind of minimize the importance of it all. So Selena, because she had that elite background, her gymnastic skills are really, really good. So there's both sides to it, like what was good about elite, but then if you do it too harshly, they'll want to quit a little bit earlier than they, they would have if you didn't train them that way. I remember when I was doing elite, like there's a lot of girls that would just say their coaches are so hard on them, their practices are for hours long, and I would come like here and I'm just like, I do my normal three, four hour practice. My coaches give me half five, we play connect four, and I'm like, <laughs> like it's just little things like that. Playing with cards or playing with chips, like there's so many pieces, like it just helps you take faster turns without us even realizing it. So she tries to like form it into a way where we don't really see us working that hard, but we are actually. So she's a smarty that way. <laughs> I had the concussions and realized that I couldn't compete or work out or do gymnastics at the level that I had been doing it my entire life. So I kind of fell into coaching because I'd always been really good at it. I also realized that I did not want my kids to leave my hands broken the way I felt like the sport had left me and my teammates and most of the gymnasts that I had known in my career. If you type in submarine rock and just continue past the rock, we're here. We're up Coral Canyon and I am here this morning with my partner, Matai. We caught the sunrise this morning because that's my favorite thing to do. So we're going to catch some cool shots while we're up here. Um, and we're going to start our day on the best foot possible. <laughs> Gymnastics, the culture was very toxic even as a coach. For example, I had a situation where I had a head coach that I was working with. I had gotten into this habit of getting on the child's level when I needed to really connect with them. And so I would get down, take their hands in my hands, and we would have whatever conversation on a very grounded level. And it would create a situation where I was letting them know that they're safe. And I noticed that this same coach would take those mannerisms you can stand and after saying something very damaging doing something very damaging do the same things emotionally you're programming that child to say I've just abused you but this is love think about that think, think about how many children are subject to that because they're really good at what they do. Gymnastics is like an escape place for me. The sport just used to be really, really toxic from what I've heard and it's caused a lot of issues for a lot of girls. Which I haven't had to experience, which I'm super grateful for. Because my coaches being super positive that they are, it's definitely helped me to not be like negative to myself and to not like basically hate myself like other girls do because of the way their coaches make them feel. 
It's just mentally challenging. I remember two summers ago, I had like a huge mental block on my dismount. So when Simone said like she had the twisties at the Olympics, like I understood that because I had the twisties. I wasn't able to do my dismount for months. So when like she showed that she had the twisties, like the GOAT has like a problem that every other gymnast probably has. It feels good that people can make mistakes like that and like show that she's not okay to compete. So it makes me feel better. But. When coaches and parents, their intention is to see their young gymnasts have success, that they put that as the priority. And maybe it's unintentional to, for them to ignore or not think about their mental and emotional health. As adults, we're looking at this training and these athletes through the adult lens. If I was a tough athlete and I think, well, I, was, I could do it, why can't you? Then we're not looking at it through their lens, through their thoughts, their feelings, their nervousness. So we really have to kind of shift our view and, our, and be curious. That's the huge word right there is be curious. Because when we are, then we're not in this position of power but now we're relating to them. The child's brain, it does not fully develop until their mid-20s, 25 or older. The more that we say, you're not working hard enough, then that's what they say to themselves. What they see then is mirrored back in their own mind. So the fact that we keep in gymnastics criticizing and even telling them they're not good enough, we don't recognize that now we're developing the child's brain to think in that negative way, helping them just little by little. They will perform better when they get 10 seconds to take a pause and take a breath. And the coaches are like, hmm, you know, because they have numbers to get done, they want to get in the repetitions. <laughs> but then I'll say, you invest just a little bit of time and you will get a better, more motivated, more focused athlete and the performance will show it. So I think the coaches and parents are just not aware and uh, that's what we're doing, is we're increasing awareness. We literally are damaging these kids' mental health and well-being by just focusing on success. And then who are they if they're not this successful athlete? And that's painful. For most of my life, I was very easily described as a gymnast, and I would have described myself that way. And then there was kind of this background character who was always developing, who was like trying to get out of gymnastics and that identity. Matai is like a jack of all trades and like, you know, super adventurous and like 
has had a life where he was able to try a lot of things all the time, you know? And I've only gotten to that place probably within the last, like, six years, you know, where I'm trying things that aren't specific to gymnastics. Hey, spider. Take your time. Always three points of contact. When you're doing anything that's, like, extreme and, like, gives you a rush of adrenaline, this is where I want to stay. Even as an adult, I can see myself, you know, unlearning that need for validation. What? Why does it trigger so much stress in you right now, this room? Go away. No, I'm serious. Go away. Does it bring back? I still have a hard time not being the best at things. I still have a hard time being a beginner at things. It's behind you, but it's never not with you. I don't want to do this. But you can... You don't want to get hurt? No. I got to a point where I was like, you are going to have to try. <laughs> And it'll be okay if it's not perfect or you look stupid or like, you know, like you have no idea what you're doing. Like, it's okay. I love being in nature. It's like always medicine and you're always getting exactly what you needed. Like depending on where you are mentally, spiritually, physically, like you get what you need every time you come out. It's a little triggering seeing another a rip on my hand, you know? Um, it's like... Uh, That'd be so sick. Scary. Scary. I think I handled it quite well. You did. Way to stay low. It's been really cool to tap into the creative part of myself. It's been really cool to kind of be living out the childhood dreams I had before gymnastics took over my life. <laughs> Once I couldn't do gymnastics at the level that I was used to doing it, that there were so many other things I was good at. There were so many other things I was good at that I just completely f didn't even forget about. Like, they did not register the same. Keep walking, there you go. Pretty. Yeah, and then just kind of move around in a little circle there. The gymnastics journey had been very magical in the sense that I said I wanted to go to the Olympics and the kind of path unfolded to do it at the highest level. The same thing happened once I changed my focus. After the experience as an athlete, when I was phased out, I felt forced out due to injury. I felt broken. So after gymnastics, I really had to come to a place of like finding who I was without that title. Mm -hmm.